Hello and welcome to an introduction to programming using Visual Basic, exercises for beginners. In this one we are going to create a simple calculator. We are to write a program that allows the user to specify two numbers and then adds, subtracts or multiplies them when the user clicks on an appropriate button. The output should give the type of arithmetic performed and the result, meaning that the output will also display whether we use the addition, multiplication or subtraction and also add the result to it. And then when one of the numbers in an input box is changed, the output text box should be cleared. Now the form for this exercise is very simple, just two text boxes, one for the first number input, one for the second number input and three buttons with plus, minus and multiplication. And we have a text box for the output that I named txt results and that one is read only. And here's my form, I already created it. It's exactly as you saw. The only thing to notice is that I changed the color for the plus, minus and multiplication to an RGB color of 224, 224, 224, which is a slightly more gray than the background, just to make them stand out a little. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is addition. So I'll double click the addition button. In order to do the addition, we need few variables. The first one will be for the input of the first number, then the input of the second number and one that will hold the result. So I'm going to declare them and all of these will be type double. In other words, we can use decimal numbers, not just integers. All right, so the next thing we should do is to make sure that the user entered something into the text boxes, that we are not trying to do an operation on empty text boxes. So I will do a simple if statement. If the txt first dot text is not empty and the txt second dot text is not empty. So we can now assign the values from the text boxes into our variables. So our first number will equal the txt first dot text. So if the user actually entered valid number, there would be no problem. It would be implicitly converted into a double and assigned to first number. However, it is highly recommended that you do an explicit conversion to a string and make it double or an integer. In our case, it's a double explicitly. So we will do CDBL and convert the text from the text box to a double and assign it to our first number. And we will do the same with the second number and this one comes from the second text box. So now when we have the numbers we can add them together so our result will simply equal the first number plus the second number. And we can now output the result so txt results dot text will equal and we can construct the actual result. It will say the result of and we'll concatenate first number and remember we're supposed to make sure that the output also contains what operation we use so we can simply output the results of first number plus second number equals and we will concatenate the result but I forgot to concatenate the equals. So this is our output for our text box so let's test it let's run it and see what we get so it's loading and here's my form so let's do 10.2 and 2.5 and if I add it together it says the result of 10.2 plus 2.5 equals 12.7 so this is our calculations and we can just copy paste all this into our minus and also into our multiplication because all we have to change is the operation over here we are using the plus but in our uh, subtraction button click we will use minus first number minus second number and in our result I will change the plus into minus again we still use the evaluation we use the assignment of the input to our variables we perform the calculation and output it and the same for the multiplication I will simply change that to times or multiplication instead of plus so now all three of them should work let's try it 10.2 and 10.5 for example 
So this is a plus, a minus, and multiplication is 107.1. Now, if you notice, uh, there's a lot of repetition in our code. And uh, later in the course, we will go over the functions and methods and how to use them to avoid all this repetition. But for now, at least what we can do is to kind of utilize the variables. We use the first number, second number, and result in all three operations. However, if I, let's say, delete them from the minus, all this is going to be now red because we don't have access to these uh, first, second, and results variables neither from our addition or multiplication. These are all local variables, only available within the event. So in order to be able to use them, we need to declare them as a form level variables. So I'm just going to cut them from our addition and I'm going to delete them from all three of these uh, operations and I'm going to place that right after the public class calculator. Now these are our form level variables and they are available throughout the form. If we added another button, that event would also have access to these variables. So now we just declare them once and can use them on the form. All right, so this is a little bit of a refactoring of the code, but let's make this at least a little bit more appealing. First of all, we only have the if statement, but we don't have anything in the else statement. In fact, we don't have any else statement. So what happens if the user forgot to enter any of these values? In this case, nothing. We'll simply ignore it. That's not really a good way to do that. So let's add an else statement. And the else statement will be very simple. We will do a message box dot show, and we will simply say, please enter both numbers. And I'm going to get this else statement and place it into subtraction as well as the multiplication. So now when I run it and I'll enter the first number, but forgot the second, I get the message, please enter both numbers. And it happens in all three buttons. And we can also enhance the program a little bit by making sure the user can visually confirm what operation is being performed by making the button of that operation more visible or change the color of it. So when we go to a plus button click event, after the if statement, we change the color of the button to something else. Right now, remember, it's the RGB color 224, 224, 224. So let's change the button plus the back color of it to something else. So let's do color dot, and you can pick any color you want. It really doesn't matter. I'll just pick the first one, which is aqua. And the other two buttons will remain the same. So this will visually confirm with the user that yes, I click the plus button. That's the operation I'm using. So the back color of the minus button will still be the 224, 224, 224. But you can see that that's not actually here because that's an RGB color. It's a custom color I created. But color has a property called from RGB color. So color dot from RGB and in the parentheses, you will supply the three numbers for the R and a G and a B. And in our case, it's the 224, 224, 224. And I'm going to do the same for the button multiply. So it's going to be still color dot from RGB, 224, 224, 224. So when the button is clicked, it changes to aqua. The other two buttons will remain the same. I'm going to copy paste this code to my minus or the subtraction event. And this time we want the minus button to be aqua. So we will change that color dot aqua and the plus and the multiplication will remain the 224, 224 and 224. And in our multiplication event, we want obviously the multiplication button to be the aqua color and we will keep the plus and minus buttons at 224, 224, and 224. So let's run it. So let's do 10.2 and 10.5, like we did before. I'll click plus, and you can see now the plus button is blue, and these two remain the same. If I click minus, this one changes the color, and the plus and multiplication is the same. And of course, multiplication changes the color when clicked, and the other two buttons are the same. And the results are still correct.
there's one more thing that we need to do according to this exercise as you can see we're supposed to clear the text box the output text box if any of the numbers in the input text box changes and to do that we are going to use a text changed event if i go to my form and double click on the first number text box it creates a txt first that's the name of my text box text changed event this one for example button plus click is a click event you can see up here that it's a click event of the button plus if i click on my private sub txt first text changed you can see that event is text changed and it's the txt first text box so when the event is triggered it means that something in the text box changed and i'm going to clear the results text box so we will do txt results clear and when i click the second number text box it's the same thing triggers the text changed event for that text box and i can just uh, place the txt results that clear to it so when i run it now let's add some uh, numbers together and now when i click here and i delete one of the numbers you can see that triggered the text changed event and it cleared the results text box if i do the same for the second text box again it clears the text box for the results so this is the exercise and i will see you in the next video